Okay, sorry, I couldn't read my writing. Um, do you uh, just stick to pagan ways and traditions or do you also use uh, other ideas or information from other cultures or beliefs in your rituals? Like affirmations, is meditation, incantation? Um, yeah. I, I personally, it's not going to be the same for everyone, but I personally have a tendency to, if it feels right to me at a, a deep soul level, that it just sits right with me, then I will pull in from other cultures and beliefs. Yeah, I do. Um, because I, I love using the um, pono technique. I don't know that one. Um, but that originally comes from, as far as I can gather, it comes from, um, it's a shamanic practice that originates from Hawaii. Okay, well that's so interesting. It's different again, but I like using that for my own um, self-development. So it's not necessarily to do with my pagan practices. But to me, it's all kind of mashed up in one because it's part of who I am. Yeah. Um, so that's all to do with. I can never remember the exact wording, but there's there's four sayings that you you do as part of it, and it's to do with. Um, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I forgive you. I love you. It's something like that. Sounds really nice. So. But so there's little elements of different things that I like to bring in. And obviously, if I'm working with a particular um, goddess or god, or if I want to bring in a, an angel or so, something like that, they don't necessarily all come from a pagan background. I might bring in something that's Egyptian or that's Greek. Yeah, I can relate to those, the, the Mayas, the Incas. The Egyptians, the Greeks, the Romans, all those things have, it's, it's because of the terror, I suppose, uh, the mythology. I'm really in, interested in history and mythology and how they have come into our everyday life, really. Yeah, well, that's what the tarot is all about, though, isn't it? Depicting yeah. everyday life and our different stages of growth. Yeah, like... Um, the, the goddess is like the Queen of Pentacles, Empress, and um, the Empress, the Queen of Pentacles. You see that this is what happens, sorry. Okay. And um, also the uh, High Priestess, they're all women, they're all powerful, they're also nurturing. One has got, got green fingers, the other one it has green fingers but it's also a very with material. The Empress is higher than the Queens and so she's even higher than the Queen of Pentacles but yet she can travel if you know the mythology behind it you she can uh, she um, represents also the seasons because her daughter was uh, kidnapped kidnapped by the uh, dark world or underworld uh, king and um, or lord and for six months or nine months and that's uh, when uh, she really got upset the empress because she's the mother and so she spoke to her daughter or to the dark lord and he let her return for uh, um, nine months and that's the the cycle of pregnancy and then it is you come out of the winter and then you go into the winter again. And that is what I've understood from the mythology uh, behind the Empress. And that's how I relate it back to Pagan or Wiccan. And that's why I find it fascinating. Um, and because of the simple way of life, like uh, you can be you can be happy with less like Everybody, you don't have to go on holiday twice a year or anyway, you can take the day out to go and do a picnic in, in the park. That, that is the way I think of uh, um, Wiccan 
and the simpleness, the simple of things, being thankful to be able to go out and walk uh, without any uh, problems and to take a picnic in a basket and uh, a blanket to sit on and enjoy uh, a lunch or something like that with somebody else. That people are losing their creativity. I also find that Wiccans are very creative because I do that as well, make things from nothing. I think you can relate to that. Yes, definitely. <laughs> I also believe that everything is connected, uh, whether it is earthly or spiritually, but we just use different wordings, like meditation is in India, meditate, right? The Beatles brought that back from India. But it's, the meditation is also like an affirmation, it's an other word. And incantation is to me also an affirmation. Okay. Yeah, everything's very interlinked, regardless of which religion it comes under. They, they're normally quite similar in a lot of aspects, just that they have different names to things. Yeah, or culture. Yeah. For example, this is what I would ask in the workshop. What I also believe is that uh, you can use this book. How can you use this or how would you use this as um, we would have pupils or clients in the workshop, hopefully? Yeah. And I would ask them, how do you, what do you use? Do you meditate? Do you contemplate? Or do you um, do an incantation? And, and there are slight differences, like meditation is you can use a mantra or you can use one of these spells, the affirmations. That's what I, that's why I like these. Yeah, yeah, they've got some really beautiful pieces in both books. Yeah. Uh, so it keeps you um, twigged, you have to learn the uh, you have to learn the in, uh, affirmations and use them in your meditations. I think they're beautiful. So you don't have to be a witch to, uh, to use them. It helps to reset your button, the way of the thinking. Yeah. And, and that is what we sometimes need. Like it's easy to say if you've got a bad thought coming in, you know, how do you change your mind? The reset button. So if you use the affirmations in this book, you can reset your mind to that saying, thank you. I've uh, I've negative thought. Thank you. And I'll go away now and then start doing an affirmation to think positively again. Yeah, because they also help to rewire your brain as well. Yeah, it will enhance you um, mentally and I believe emotionally and physically, among other things. Yeah, I agree with you there. Thank you. I was just going to ask you, what do you think on this point of discussion? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, what... I, I like using um, affirmations. Affirmations. I, I like also using them if, if you've got, um, say, a, a limited self-belief that you want to work through if you're doing your shadow work and things like that, then you can write out what it is, what the negative thought is, and then That's flip the shadow. It. That's the shadow. Some yeah. people don't understand what shadow is. So the negative side is everybody has a masculine, feminine, or black and white. And it's like day and night. We talked, I talked this about this with Wendy, but just a refresher, a recap for the new people. Shadow side is the negative side. So like what um, George is saying, if you do your shadow work, if you are actually working on your dark side, your negative thinking, how can you change that and bring it into the light? So you you'd write that out first, your negative aspects that you want to work with. Then you try and flip it so that it's a positive statement, which would create your affirmation. And then you can repeat that to yourself. And if you, because you can put it on a post-it note and stick it on the mirror so that whenever you go to the bathroom each morning, yeah, 
<laughs> then it's there and you read it to yourself in the mirror. Because if you do that repetitively, I think it's for 21 days, then it actually rewires the way that you think because the, the neurons that we use, um, I think it's Hibbs law, neurons that fire together wire together. So you get stuck in that pattern, but to break the cycle, if you repeat the, the positive affirmation for 21 days, it can help shift it and shift you out of it. So I'd love to use them for that as well. Good, nice. Uh, I believe that as well. Brenda said something about three week uh, meditation, uh, positive thinking. Okay. I didn't know it was something law. What was it? Hebb's law. Hebb's law? Hebb, yeah, Hebb's law. Never heard of it. Is that H I P? Um, H H E B, I think. H E B. Yeah. Hebb's law. Okay. I'll try and find. So I've, I've got it in a book somewhere. I'll try and find the original um, person that that did it. But they're a neuroscientist. Okay. Well, we've got um, the the last thing on uh, on this page. Um, we have um, you. There is an old Zen adaged. That's on page 13. If you would like to look with me, of course, I can't pronounce it. <laughs> Adage, Kinzen ich nayo, body and mind together. Am I in the right book? Yeah, in the green one. Yeah. Page 13. And you. Oh, <laughs> I don't know if I can pronounce this either. Kenzen Aichinayo? Yeah, could be Aichinayo, yeah. Okay. Well, it's supposed to mean body and mind together. You cannot separate the mental and magical processes from the physical ones. That's quite true. It's the three in three elements. It's like the Holy Trinity. Yeah. Sun, moon and earth. I, I like the way three is repetitive here in this book. Or in Wiccan. It's the magical uh, number. Yeah, it is creative in tarot. It means creativity and productivity. OK, magical uh, processes from the physical ones to magical energy will flow best in your body is in a good if your body is in good shape everything in your environment mental physical and emotional and spiritual affects how you raise energy and how to uh, the energy affects you and magical output now and in, in this book we'll be doing that next time raising energy on how to raise energy because i just i was so tired after doing these two books for the last two days that as within and so without so that means for external and internal the best which you can be great stuff take a moment to list your physical issues that's the next thing in this book that's the task okay i would give this to the clients in the workshop as homework most probably um, take a moment to list your physical eye, eye issues from head to toe. Use the section below. Start with your head. Here you will list, list things such as migraines, constant eye infections, dry eye, hair falling out, TMJ, etc. I don't know what TMJ is. I was wondering that as well. As we move down the body, list only uh, problems with skin, organs, brittle nails. Do not worry about weight. We all have weight issues. And as we work through this book, handbook, um, and fix us, uh, the weight will fix itself. Now, what I've um, experienced is that if you eat healthier, you lose weight much quicker. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've seen people that drink alcohol and they stop the alcohol. 
the right a rake. Well, this is what we have to fill in. But that's why I said this is like the shadow book, because I would suggest putting it into a jotter um, and keep it private because it's uh, about you. You don't want everybody that if you start talking about the book, then you want to hand the book over if somebody wants to look at it. Yeah. So make your own shadow book or diary. That's what I would suggest. And, and I'm a later date, if you want to go over it again, you can. Yeah. Uh, or if you want to do it together with a friend in the future. Yeah. And uh, also, um, uh, you can add notes to the side of it because I there's not enough room. I can put all my problems here. <laughs> I think I've got loads. That I can't put That's it on That's what I thought plate. when I looked at it. There's not really a lot of space. Yeah. OK, now we're going on to the, I think, the best part of this chapter. And you've got my printout. And it is uh, about the 13 uh, tolls of the witch. And tolls are, I thought it was toads first. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit like toads. So, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you can have some fun with this book as well. <laughs> it really exercises the mind. <laughs> OK, well, it's the 13 rules and the 13 rules. The special uh, word um, uh, is read, isn't it? In the Wiccan language. Uh, yeah. Read and I couldn't understand. Um, so they should have put a book of translation at the back. I should have, yeah. <laughs> but with the uh, last series, we the, the series, I got the idea to do the series because of this beautiful deck from Marla Brooks, The Witch's Oracle. Um, there is a review that you can see on my channel if you like. Um, and then you know a little bit more about um, Marla Brooks. And um, she's a beautiful artist as well. And uh, um, in that booklet, uh, and that's where I, sorry, 